Good afternoon and welcome to episode 65 of Red True Diaries. I just lit up a bit because to me 65 is a big marker, <laughs> even though it's a small marker in ways, because I intend to make at least 365. I most likely will stop after that and give myself some kind of break and decide if and how I would like to continue from there. But my goal is to make one every day for a year. So being at episode 65 means I have exactly 300 more to go. This will be very interesting by the end to have this body of work. And so speaking of, you know, one of the reasons, one of the main reasons I started this is to help more men and women feel more comfortable with their feminine side and to embrace it, to revere it on a certain level, to not push it away or suppress it or repress it just because it's not as well understood. It's becoming more understood in time and it's only going to happen if we give it our focus, our time, our energy and attention just like female orgasms. So the other day I was speaking with a coworker and I told him about Phoenix and all that I'm doing in regards to my show. And he totally understood. He said, he's in his early 30s, I think 33 or so. And he said, you know, it's one of the reasons why I was intrigued and wanted to be with my now wife, um, at the time it was his girlfriend, is because she told him that she had never had an orgasm with a guy before, before a female, with any other person. He wasn't sure if she did have any on her own. But this fascinated him and he wanted to help her in this regard experience. Um, what it's like to have an orgasm with another person and just as I've said in previous episodes and he concurs that a lot of it for women is mental and emotional comfort the more mentally and emotionally comfortable we feel with ourselves as well as with another person the easier it is for us to achieve that orgasmic state physically and it is easier said than done. We are complex beings, even in even in terms of our health. Say, um, you know, in comparison to guys, there have only been studies done within the past 50 years or so done specifically geared towards women, and not say using research done on male cadavers and with men's health, which simply applied to women. We're, we're similar in some ways. I mean, human beings overall are 99% more similar than they are dissimilar or unsimilar. Dissimilar. But uh, those differences are important for us to acknowledge. So he said that he did achieve his mission and it, and it was a mission for him and he continues to. And I was really happy to hear that as opposed to um, being deterred or feeling like it's unimportant, which some people do. And, um, and I'm proud of her for having said something, my coworker's wife, and being open to that. It takes, it's, it can make you feel very vulnerable and, and oftentimes w women, more often than men, will not make it important or even fake their orgasms for the sake of wanting the, their guy or girl to feel, um, Accomplished, let's say. And it takes patience and trust and honesty and passion and all of those wonderful things. So, that being said, <laughs> one of the things I did last night, um, last night was a rare occurrence for me in terms of I fell asleep but then I woke up in the middle of the night and had a hard time falling back asleep. And so, I decided to do some research on Phoenix, the Marvel comic character Phoenix. Um, 
whom I always I actually thought that she was an incarnation of Jean Grey. But that is not true. I mean, no, the Phoenix, the Force, is, as is also known, the capital F, like Star Wars, the Force, which is very interesting. Um, the Phoenix Force in the Marvel comic series uses Jean Grey and helps her continue to live once she is on the verge of death. And so Phoenix creates Jean Grey's body while Jean Grey's real body is resting. The, the Phoenix Force cl clones Jean Grey's body and implants her consciousness into the cloned body. And that's just that that's one incarnation of this Phoenix Force. It gets deep. I had no idea how deep these Marvel comic characters go. There's a whole, <laughs> they have a whole wiki section in the Marvel Comics website. And, um, sorry, I heard something that I just noticed someone left a coffee cup on the ledge. Interesting. Anyway, I'll get that before I go. So, focus. Marvel has worlds and multiverses, universes. There's a version of a Dark Phoenix, and they also refer to her as the Black Queen. It's it's amazing, amazing, and um, and it's a force that even itself has a hard time handling, like the Phoenix Force itself. And I think because of the times when it is harmful to others, from what I understand. But overall, through repeated incarnations and progress, I think the last thing, oh, the last thing that I read, I don't fully remember, so maybe I'll come back to that tomorrow. But it had grown, it had tempered out, and I'm wondering if it was still, if it was on this incarnation of Earth, because there are multiple incarnations of Earth. Um, but I don't think, I think it did still use, I think it used another version of Jean Grey's body again. I know this all sounds odd, and I have no idea who are the creators of these different characters in the Marvel universe. But it is a Marvel, truly. It sounds pretty fascinating. It makes me actually want to read more of their, I don't know, graphic novels, comic books. I'm not even sure how these are put out other than movies. I, I'm only familiar with X-Men and the Marvel characters through movies, but now I would like to know because someone gave all of this a lot of thought. And personally, I like getting out of the everyday reality of just existence on Earth and do like contemplating the different possibilities of life in other places in our huge, wide, Best universe <laughs> and multiverse. Yeah, I'm gonna look further into that too. The difference of multiverse versus universe. I mean, I get the basic concept, but I'm not sure the differentiations. And I'm sure, it goes into other dimensions and they do a lot of space travel too. It's so cool. But essentially, I mean, we think of the Phoenix just now in relation to passion and reincar different reincarnations because the basic mythology of the phoenix is a birth, death, and rebirth. And it's good to know because this, although I do believe, say, this, there, this moment, there's no other moment like this, this moment in our lives, whether you're watching this years from now or as soon as I post this, even for myself right now, even when I watch it later, it's always different. It might seem the same, but every moment is different. There's an old saying about you can never step in the same river twice because it's constantly moving, constantly changing, whether we're aware of it or not. It's one of the reasons I love meditation too, is because it allows me to take time, make time to pause and appreciate all that is, and to remember this connection and this stillness amongst all the change. Thank you for watching and listening.
and you have a wonderful time exploring your inner and outer world for yourself, for us all. I love you. Mm -hmm.